Hi, C Farm Chidi here, and how are you all doing? I hope you are all doing great. So, on today's tutorial, I'll be sharing with you how to make this kaftan bubble dress that you can see on the screen. It's not the regular kaftan bubble dress, this one has a yoke, it has an added fullness, it has an invisible zipper at the back, it also has a lacing that is a rope that is inside that you can use to snatch the waist. You can see how beautiful is looking on me. You can see how lovely this gown is. Now this is the back. It has an invisible zipper that you will barely notice is there. You can see the lace in there. This is what it looks like. And you can see the gown that I copied. I just altered the yoke a bit because I don't want my own yoke to be as wide as this one. You can see how lovely it's looking. If this sounds like what you've been interested in knowing how I did it, then you have to stick around till the end to see every bit of what I did to achieve this lovely booboo -boo dress. It is really a lovely tutorial and I am very, very sure that you will enjoy the whole process of making this dress. So let's get right into it. Now to make this booboo -boo dress, I started with a basic pattern. I like using basic patterns because it helps me to control how full or big I want the booboo -boo dress. Now I just marked an extension of the shoulder there, that is I extended it by 12 and if I take it straight it is going to land me here, okay, but I am going to go up from here by 1.5 to 2 inches, then I will connect this to the neckline. This means that the shoulder slope will not take the regular shoulder slope of the basic pattern, I lifted it by about 1.5 to 2 inches from where it landed, okay. Now, from this point, I am going to extend it a little further by one inch, and that is what I just did, and I extended it. That is just to give that puffy effect that is at the end of the sleeve before the fitted part. Now, I had to take 12 inches there and drew a line, okay? So, having drawn this line to that point of 11 to 12 inches, I am going to go ahead and shape the part now i went to the hip line and marked three inches down from the hip line now this is a guideline it's a guideline to know where i'll be fitting this gown from i'm using my free hand to draw it and as i get close to that um three inches i will now shape it down to towards the knee of the gown because this is not the full length now at that knee i now have to take about two and a half inches there or three inches and now I connected it like so. This is what I have for the gown. And this is how it will be. This um, width at the knee is how it will be till the hem of the dress. That is the full length of the gown. Because this paper is not up to the full length of the gown. The full length of the gown is about 62 inches. Okay. Now having done that, I came to the neck. And I went in by there, there by 3 quarter inch. Yes, this is a basic neckline of 3 by 3 but on that neck width, I went in more by 3 quarter inch, and then I dropped it by 3. This is for the back neckline, because I'll be cutting the back pattern first, okay? Now, this is how I connected it, and yeah, that is what I have. And I'll also go ahead and draw the front pattern, but I'll be cutting the back first, now I dropped from the basic neckline, I dropped the front neckline by about 2.5 to 3 inches from the basic 3 by 3 neckline that I took originally. Now I connected it to 3 quarter inch mark that I used to draw the back neckline. And yes, this is what I have. I will just go ahead and cut this out. Here I'm just trying to make this very visible so that you can see very well what I did. Now this is the shape that we will have there. Ensure that you do yours just like this so that you will get exactly the effect that I got. Feel free to style your yoke the way you want. I also altered mine slightly. Now see where I marked because I'll be notching that point. It's very important to the attachment of the final cuff kind of sleeve. Okay. Now, having cut it out, this is what I have. I will just go ahead and bring out my fabric. Now, this is the fabric I used for this project. It's a regular adire and the sequine fabric and zipper. 
I have the black zipper and also the orange one. At this stage, I wasn't sure of the one I wanted to use. It's an invisible zipper. So, but I ended up using the black one. Yes. So, right now, I'm going to fold this fabric. This fabric is about, I think it's about four inches, four yards. Sorry, it's about four yards. So what I did was to just fold it into two equal parts and cut it into two so that it would just be enough for what I wanted to do, it, do with it, okay? And also to give me the pattern that I want. Now here I folded it into two and I'll be cutting it. I'll be dividing it with my scissors. Now this is what I did and... I will keep one side apart for the front and then I will cut the back first. That is what I did. Here I folded it like so. I kept it on fold. You can see the design like this is what the one I kept up and the one with the vertical lines is the one I kept down. Just to give me that effect of, you know, bust or um, star sort of, okay? So now I placed the pattern like so and... I'll be cutting it out here you can see me measuring the length of the gown to ensure that it is up to 62 inches that i want it to get and yes it is so what i now did was to just um go ahead and pin it down if you don't want to add a zipper to yours just feel free to place it just you know at the fold but now i want to add my zipper so that the lacing that i plan to put will be very easy to tie yes i try to make my clothes very functional so that it won't be hard for anyone wearing it to find it difficult when wearing it so here i just cut the neckline remember this is the back neckline and i'll go ahead and cut the shoulder feel free not to take the shoulder slope some people don't take the shoulder slope slope but i take it because it's very important it has a balance that it gives a cloth i don't miss it okay but it's just that for boo boo i try to lift it more than the regular um shoulder slope just as you saw at the beginning of the pattern making here i'm just pinning it down so that the air from my window will not be disturbing now you can see how I'm cutting it. When I got here, I just had to take the measurement and take equal measurement down to the hem of the gown. This is to make it just to be straight up. Yes, and that is what I got. I'll go ahead and cut it all through. Beautiful. Now at the hem, I had to check it to ensure that everything is lying smooth and straight. And this is what I am doing here. I'm just arranging it very well so that any excess will be trimmed off. And that is what I just did. I had to throw the hem and yes, everything is appearing nice and beautiful. I now notched where I said it will be very important when I'm applying the sleeve cuff. Okay. Now I'm cutting open the center back because of the zipper that will be there. So now this is the end of the back pattern. We will go ahead to cut the front pattern. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you are, give it a thumbs up, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this tutorial and my tutorials. So here I am just, you know, marking the bust points. I want to shape to draw the yoke styling, okay? I marked the boss point so that it will be a guide for me to draw this yoke styling, okay? So, here I am. I used the, you know, the boss and the waist mark to make the styling. Here I'm just cutting out the front neckline. So, I had to mark it like so. I just used my free hand to like draw this yoke styling. Feel free to draw your yoke how you want it, okay? So now this is how I'm drawing mine. This is lovely. And then I'm just using the ruler to shape it out the way it is supposed to be. After using my hand. Because the hand is smoother and better for me to use and do that first tracing okay so here i'm just smoothing it to make it fine if you're enjoying this tutorial do well to subscribe 
turn on the, your notification bell to be the first to know each time I upload my videos and you won't regret joining this lovely family. So right here, I'm just cutting out the yolk. I'm just putting guidelines. See my markings there. I will notch those places when I'm cutting on fabric. This will help me to gather that part when it is time to, you know, form the gathers. Here I'm cutting out the yolk. And this is what I have. I'm drawing the guidelines well because I'll be notching it on the fabric. Here I'm drawing slash lines, slash lines in the direction of the fullness that I'll be adding. So these are slash lines that I'm drawing. I'll be cutting them open to use and form the fullness that we have in front of this kaftan bubble dress. Okay. So having done this, I will just go ahead and also fold the fa back fabric and start slashing and spreading after that. So I'll now go ahead and fold this fabric, the second half of the fabric. I'll fold it into two equal parts like so, just as I did like I did in front and I'll be placing the the pattern on it now this is how i'll be placing it i have to drag it down a bit from the beginning of that fabric because of the added fullness just a bit about three inches away from the starting of the fa of this uh, fabric okay notice that i placed the pattern this time on fold unlike when i was cutting the back i gave space of three quarter inch or one inch for the zipper allowance now this is how i'm slashing I'm slashing to the side but not through it okay you won't cut it open but you just slash it like this and stop before you get to the side okay now I'm opening it by about three quarter to one inch so I'll keep doing it and arranging it till I do that for every part of the slash Now, this is how I slashed it. Sorry, guys. Um, When I finished, when I was about editing this video, I noticed that the process of gathering this part of the dress to attach to the yoke, I missed it. Not like I didn't film it. I filmed it, but I couldn't find it when I was editing this video. I have to apologize for that, but it's really an easy one, and I know that you will understand. Okay? So here I'm just cutting it out with half inch allowance there. You can see the half inch allowance I left there. And also here I added half inch allowance. And then I'll have to cut it like so. Other side with about one inch allowance or three quarter is fine. So here I'm just marking just as I did in front. So that I'll have equal measurements all through to the, the to the hem of the dress. Now I'm cutting it out, and that is it. Definitely because of this added fullness, the front will definitely finally be shorter, a bit shorter than the back, and I'll be adding up extra fabric at that hem area. Now I'm notching here, and I will go ahead and notch all those guidelines. Those guidelines are very important because when I will form the gather here, I will use it to match the guideline that is on the yoke so that everything will rhyme perfectly well. I know you understand what I mean. Now, the next thing to do is just to form gather on this neckline and then match it with the guideline on the yoke and stitch it together. Okay. Now, what I want to do now is to cut the yoke. I folded the sequin fabric, unfold. It's on fold right now and um, I will mark these guidelines as I'm cutting out the yoke, okay? Is that easy? So just cut out the yoke with half inch all through the size, half inch allowance, sewing allowance. And I also cut the lining of this. I'm so sorry I 
lost this part of the video of cutting the lining and I stabilized his. I applied interfacing on the sequin fabric that is hasty and on the line and I used cutting lining and I interfaced it with tissue paper stay okay so that is what I did for this neckline I cut the lining of cotton fabric okay and you know interfaced it with tissue paper and also interface the sequin fabric with hair stay that is what I did here it is I just formed the gather here okay turn the neck of the yoke and then attached it matching those points those guidelines that is all i did for this front part now this is the back i'll go ahead and cut the the facing of the back i've kept this fabric on fold and i will be cutting the facing so you place it as i did and cut out the facing Cut the fabric open because it's on fold and go ahead and shape the facing like so. So this is what I have. I placed the neckline back to ensure everything is rhyming and I trimmed off every excess. Now this is the facing. I also interfaced it with tissue paper stay. Yes. So here I've joined the yoke to the, you know, gathered path. I just matched the guideline, turned the neckline of the yoke with the lining and formed the gather. And attached it that is all I did here so sorry I don't know how I lost this part of the video I've also torn the neckline of this back okay I turned the neckline with the facing after applying interfacing here I'll just go ahead and stitch down the zipper what I'll do is to know where the zipper will end and I will stitch it close from where it ends till the hem of the dress then I will apply my zipper now this is how I'm going to turn it when I have stitched it down already. Okay, here I have done exactly that. I've stitched the invisible zipper. You can barely notice that there is a zipper there. And this is how I'm going to arrange the zip and stitch down the facing so that everything will be inside. I'll also serge the facing where necessary. So this is what it looks like after I have finished. The next is to just go ahead and iron and then Place the front on it and stitch it down on the shoulder. Now watch closely to see how I am stitching down the shoulder of this dress. Now I'm going to stitch it like this. I'll remove the facing like so and turn it over like this and stitch down. That is the way I will also do the opposite side so that the front is more like in between the back and the facing of the back. And this is what I have when I was done. Everything is looking smooth and seamless. I've also stitched the side and also searched it all through. And for this other side of the side, I left an opening. Yes, so that it will be easy for me to work on. Okay, work with. It will not be holding the legs. You can see that the front is slightly shorter than the back. I'll just be adding up extra fabric there. You won't even notice that anything is added. I'll just add it, fabric that matches, the part of the pieces that matches with that side, I will just add it up there, serge it and then iron it up. Now this is what I have, I will go ahead and, you know, cut the sleeve. Now the sleeve will be gathered like this and the cuff, you know, stitched to it. Now this is how to measure. Anywhere you know the sleeve is landing, around 12 to 13 inches along your sleeve line, measure around it. Anything is it gives, that is what we are going to be using to, you know, do this. Also measure the tip of the sleeve, the hem of the sleeve, the hem of the cuff of the sleeve. Okay, that is here. So that is the measurement I took. And then the upper part gave me 12 this one is 12 right here, but around the sleeve where it will be lined then is 12, okay? That means on fold it is 6. I hope you understand. Now I want to fold the cuff of the sleeve, okay? Watch closely to see what I'm doing. I'm going to fold the two of them at once. Now this is how I folded it. Watch closely. I folded like this, okay? And then folded like this. And fold it like this okay 
Now this place is the upper part while the close part is this is the upper part of the sleeve of the cuff and this is the hem of the cuff okay I just took the measurement that the upper part has six since it's unfold and at the hem is you know five that is what I took I measured the length the length is about six and a half inches okay the length of the cuff final length is six and a half inches so i will just add the sewing allowance so that it will be about seven inches okay so now this is what it looks like this is the cuff i hope you understand it now okay the closed part is the hem of the sleeve i'll be stitching it close like this i will do the same for the second cuff like this and I will show you what I have here. I have stitched it close and I've turned this one up. Now, this is what I did. I turned it over like this. Now, you can see the closed part is the cuff, while the open part will join that part of the adire, the sleeve of the adire. Okay? I will be gathering it at that upper part. I hope you understand. So, having done that, I will just go ahead and bring this and form a gather on the scarf like this and that is all from your gather let it match the size of the scarf because the size of this upper part of the cuff is where the sleeve will be landing i hope you understand so i'm going to gather it and stitch it down round it and do the same thing for the second sleeve here i have stitched it down you can see the slight gather formed there i have also done for the second part of the sleeve and this is what I have. Now I want to do something else. You can see I have searched it. Lovely. I will be applying uh, elastic on this part of the sleeve just to make it sluggy when you wear it. Okay. So I cut two inches elastic, two of it, because I'll be using it for the two sleeves. And this is how I will apply it. I will drag it so that it will stretch and make that place to just be perfect like you wear it you can push it up you can push it down you can just arrange the sleeve how you want it so that is what i just did there and yes this is what i have you can see the elastic there yes with it you can push the you know sleeve the way you want it and it will not feel tight here i'm going to attach the rope or the lacing to the waist i will attach it to the yoke actually from the inside now this is the lacing is about 34 inches in length yes about 34 inches in length and four inches in width so i'll go ahead and fold it up like this and stitch it down and turn it inside out and of course iron it down okay so here i've done all that i have turned it inside out with either your board keen or your safety pin okay so right now i am going to put here inside i'll put one edge end of it inside and then use my hemming gum to close it up now this is the hemming gum I'll, hemming gum i'll be using i just placed it inside like this and i will go ahead and iron it down and everything will just look seamless and intact i'll iron it down and do the same thing for the second rope or lacing okay now having done this i'll be stitching this to the bubble kaftan dress watch closely to see how i am going to fix this to the bubble kaftan dress okay now this is how where i'm going to fix it now this is the open side, it's not the side I turned with him. I will stitch it there. I'm also stitched to the opposite opposite side of this um yoke. Okay. Now having done that, this is what I have. You can see, and this is my beautiful bubble dress. You can see how lovely it's looking. I laced it up. Feel free to style your yoke. If you want it exactly the way it is on the copied picture, you can go ahead and do that. Just apply your... You can see how it's snatching the waist in front there, looking beautiful. This is so lovely. This booboo dress is so gorgeous. You can see how lovely it's looking. 
and it's really easy breezy is what you can really serve for different occasions if you enjoyed this tutorial give it a thumbs up comment let me know what you think and also do well to subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that you will be the first to know each time i upload my videos and you will not regret joining this family do well to do yours and also tag me to it follow us on instagram at jenjeskato and yes let me see your recreations this is how gorgeous this gown looks so 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 lovely see how happy i am like i got exactly what i wanted and it gives a feeling of satisfaction bye guys i will see you in my next one love you all bye